Sorry, folks, about the little bit of the delay, but welcome indeed to another exciting edition of Raw Reaction live here on Spreaker.com. And also, you can follow us on our many plat formats. Of course, we are the Elite Ringside Network. You can find us on Facebook on Facebook.com forward slash ER Network 24 7, which is also our Twitter handle. How convenient. I'm, of course, Nate the Effing Great, joined with me as always by my wonderful co host, Mr. Smart Money himself, that being Mr. A.J. Jensen. How are you, my good sir? I'm doing good. I got some homework done today, playing some Injustice 2, which is awesome, and now we're going to bang this episode out of the way. <laughs> uh, any sandwiches today? <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I, I, did go, I did go to Quick Trip, <laughs> and I, uh, I picked up a chicken sandwich. <laughs> Man. We've been giving TJ such a hard time about the whole sandwich deal. I think that soon you're going to be like the sandwich boy of uh, central Wisconsin. <laughs> well, we, we had joked about it a while back at one of the point shows. Like, he was going to do a ref bump. And then, like, one of us was going to have a sandwich in our pocket. And we were going to run up to, the like, the area where he was in the ring and slide him a sandwich. And he was going to eat that and, like, <laughs> rejuvenate it up. So so basically it was going to be like a like a Popeye the Sailor Man deal where it's like, you know, instead of spinach, it's just a sandwich. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah, we awesome. never did it, but we joked about it. Like, that would just be some funny shit. <laughs> hey, I would pay to see that regardless. And I think, you know, anybody who knows <laughs> the story, especially if anybody's listened to my interview with TJ that's up right now on Speaker.com, definitely go check it out. You'll understand what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, that would just be... Very entertaining, very funny, but we're not here, of course, to talk about sandwiches. We're here to talk about Monday Night Raw. Uh, you and I had different opinions about Monday Night Raw. I thought it was actually one of the best Raws that they've had in a while, but it was another one of those Raws where you said, uh, meh, but also the fact that you said you slept for about an hour of it. But then again, in all fairness, I did miss most of it on live because I was doing the two interviews with uh, TW3 and Logan Lynch. Go check them out as well. Uh, very worthwhile interviews to listen to. But, yeah, all in all, I looked at the highlights and stuff like that. I can't really complain too much about Monday Night Raw. The only thing I think we can complain about is probably the IC title match. We'll get into in just a bit. But I think we were both in agreement that the opening segment was probably one of the best segments and probably one of the best ways to open Monday Night Raw. But, unfortunately, let's get the bad news out of the way. Braun Strowman indeed had his surgery. And unfortunately, the prognosis for his recovery is going to be a little bit longer than expected. Instead of five to a eight weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know. It was supposed to be five to eight weeks, but then Kurt Angle came out and announced that it was probably going to be at least, at most, six months. Yeah. Damn it all. That's horrible. Damn it all. That, uh, that, that's really all that I have to say. Yeah, well, it's... It seems like he was going to get thrown into that title picture, which I, I think him and Brock would be awesome. Um, so it really sucks that this happens, and it just kind of seems to be the going trend. Like, um, you know, you can, you can go back the last couple of years now. Seth Rollins gets hot, gets his world title run, gets injured. Um Finn Balor gets his his main roster debut, wins the wins the Universal Championship, becomes the first ever Universal Champion. Blew his shoulder out in the match. He's out, and now Braun Strowman gets all this momentum going. He's given us some great matches lately. It seems like he's getting going into the title picture against Brock. Bucks his elbow up, and now he's out. You know, six months at most. Yeah. But I mean, the injuries, man. They. I think it was it 2015 it was just like the year from hell like everybody was injured so yeah. I mean it's been something that's going on um, for quite a long time and I actually had a discussion with someone on Facebook yesterday uh, we were talking about indies and uh, WWE and someone was talking about like WWE they put on four or five matches a week versus the indies where they do you know, maybe a couple of matches a month. And someone brought up a very good point. Like, you know, wrestling four or five matches a week really takes a lot more toll on your body uh, 
uh, possibilities for more injuries uh, and even people's careers getting cut short because of that uh, tenuous schedule. And I, and I do tend to agree with that. I think, I think they should cut back a little bit. There's no reason somebody should be wrestling four or five matches in a week. I can't agree more with that because I think that is the main problem is that when you wrestle too many times or when you do too many you know, situations, like I think with Braun Strowman, I think it was mainly just a freak accident that happened with him because uh, I think what may have caused the injury might have been the backstage segment with uh, Roman Reigns at Payback, which was still, you know, nice, but at the same time, you kind of notice, you know, Braun Strowman holding his arm during that segment. And I don't know if maybe it was, you know, him hitting his elbow the wrong way on that one door, or if it was the whole Roman Reigns deal. Nobody really knows exactly what happened there, but again... Well, and the, the funny thing is, is that segment wasn't even necessary. Yeah. Like, the pay-per-view <laughs> had gone off the air, and that incident happened on, like, the, the reaction show afterwards. And it was not necessary. You didn't have to do that. And now because of that, one of your top guys is out. And it's, you know, it's just... Doing, going above and beyond and doing way too much and doing stuff that you don't have to and, and it backfired on them. I agree. Uh, I will say this, that if the prognosis is six months for Braun Strowman to be out, that will make possibly have him return around, say, Royal Rumble time, which, in all honesty, I don't have an issue with that because... If he makes his return to the Royal Rumble, I think he needs to stay. If that's, you know, the prognosis is until December or January, keep him off TV until then. Have him come back at the Royal Rumble and just decimate everybody. I mean, honestly, have him eliminate like two-thirds of the Royal Rumble. Have him break Roman Reigns' record. Have him break Kane's record. Have him be that guy who, again, you know, just dominates everybody and remind everybody that, oh, my God, this is the guy who was going to, you know, be the universal champion and, you know, one injury may have, you know, slowed him down, but it didn't stop him completely. That's just my opinion. Uh, you, do you agree or do you think there's a better way to bring back Braun Strowman? Um, I actually, I, I think that would be a great, a great way to do it. Um, there's a lot of people, you know, I, I believe it was this past Royal Rumble where everyone wanted Finn Balor to come back at the Rumble and win it. And unfortunately that, that didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, Braun Strowman, I think, is a guy where that would be a plausible scenario. For him coming back, he's been gone six months, whatever. He's pissed off because he's, he's missed all this ring time. Comes back at the rubble and just, like, yeah, just decimates half the roster in the rubble. Like, I would even love to see, like, uh, something similar to like when Stone Cold was in the Rumble, where he was just eliminating people like, as they were coming out, and just basically sat in the ring by himself, waiting for the next one to come out. Um, but it would also be cool to see Braun Strowman come out and say like eliminate three or four people at one time, and just make him just completely beastly. Um, it's crazy too because about two years ago. I, I, I didn't have very high hopes for Braun Strowman. He was uh, not this last Rumble, but the, the one before. He was really sloppy. He looked really unsafe. Uh, got a lot of there's a lot of criticism about him uh, going around on the internet saying he's not ready. He's not ready. Well, he proved over that last that last year, and now going into this you know year and a half, almost two years, he's come a long way, and he I think he's proven he's had some great matches. Uh, him and Big Show, Jesus. Like, that first match where they were chain wrestling, I mean, you're, you're looking at two seven-footers, you know, Strowman's probably, I don't think he's quite seven, but, uh, you know, they bill him as seven feet. I think he's like 6'10", or, you know, 6'10", six, 6'9", six six something like that. But him and Big Show chain wrestling was just, you don't see two gigantic men like that. And when when uh, Braun Strowman did the kip up, like I, I died. <laughs> I, I you can't like a three hundred plus pound, almost seven foot tall monster <laughs> doing cruiserweight moves in the middle of the ring, and it was insane. 
yeah. Oh, 